so we're back here having a revisit. You're doing a bit of rendering, yeah? Yeah, we're going to get the scratch coat on today. We're going to use a bit of the uh, fiberglass mesh, uh, only over the, the firm light sections, and then just across where we um, where it joins. join it into the, the hemolite concrete blocks. Do you reckon that hemolite is all right just to render straight onto then? Yeah. You just go yeah, I've, I did. Um, I did the sidewall yesterday on the neighbour's side, yeah. put a scratch coat on it, and I didn't go too wet with it. Yeah. Um, it's a fairly, I'd say, sort of medium to wet mix, yeah. and it hung around for ages. So yeah. no I, I, I've always thought it's all right, and, and some other guys say, oh no, you've got to give it a stipple coat first or whatever. But no, I've always uh, gone straight on with it. Well, it's the quality yeah. block, block work I'm going straight on to. You see, so. <laughs> yeah, some people say you should have raked out the joints. Having said that, by the way, this comment we got from Stuart Nagel about the um, you should have taken that off by hand rather than yeah. using a power tool. That thermal light block. Having those little dents, that's a lovely key, isn't it? Oh yeah, so, you've got some nice thanks, thick bits. Stuart. That's another one in your, <laughs> your grumpy box. <laughs> just keep them coming, mate, because we love to see just what you can find that's wrong with the world. And I bet you go through your day doing that. Everywhere. Keeps us on our toes, doesn't it? Yeah, it spreads love and happiness. But let's go around and have a look at your other side then, shall we? Yeah. In the neighbours. Oh yeah, that's nice. Lovely. I'll tell you what, mate, you like to do it neat, don't you? Yeah, I love it. I mean, bloody hell, look at that. I almost, I almost put a level on my scratch coat. Well, <laughs> you know what? It's almost a, a finish in itself, isn't it, that scratch coat? You know, you see that in Spain and places, and you? you go, oh, yeah, that's yeah, it. looks like there's no cement in that, doesn't it? It does. It's the, it's the lovely Westrum sand. Beautiful. I love it. I had a bit yeah. of trouble finding it um, this week, in fact. Everywhere local is only supplying Leighton Buzzard at the moment. Oh, really? Either which, that or Sandgate. Which has got a few little stones in it. Yeah, yeah Leighton Buzzard is almost like spreading pebble dash straight on the wall sometimes. Yeah. Well, in this case, it wouldn't have harmed you, would it? As no. you're going on with pebble dash, you well, wouldn't have... Yeah, on this wall it's okay, but around the, the front we've got we've got the cement oh, of course flat banding yeah, around yeah, the windows yeah, and, yeah. and all around that, so it could have yeah. caused a problem. So what's that mix? That's, you've gone straight on the block. Four and one. I didn't go too wet with it. It hung around. It's not hot, is it? The no, no, so no. To... We've got a fair bit of um, waterproof. I like to put a more waterproof in the scratch. And it hangs around a little bit longer, yeah. you know. Talk to plasters. The reason they want to use waterproofer is because it helps them. <laughs> it helps them, the, the mix hang around. It doesn't go off yeah. quite as fast, does it? So, so if you're going on, if you're, like, you've got a lovely scratch there, but when, when the scratch is a bit minimal, often you see where renders come away from the scratch coat, probably because they put waterproofer in it. Yeah, because there's not no sucking reason. in. Yeah, so when I went to Cellcon, they're guys in the lab. They've built an office block of Cellcon blocks, no cavity, and they've never rendered it. If you don't render them, they'll get a film over them, yeah, they? they'll yeah. kind of get smooth. And the guy at Cellcon said, that rain will only ever penetrate about two inches into that block. Hmm. He said it won't go all the way through it. And he said, and then it'll evaporate, and then it'll rain, and it'll evaporate. And he said, you put a waterproofer on there, what have you done? He said, it'll find its way in through a crack or where the waterproof is not so good. He said, and once it's in there, you've trapped it in. Yeah. He said, and then you've got all the moisture from inside the building trying to migrate its way out, and you've trapped that in. So he said, there's no advantage whatsoever the renderer's point of view, there is because it gives them time. So I've yeah. never been able to persuade any plaster that uses a waterproofer to stop using it, but I've never had any trouble not using it. But then again, I do use SPR, yeah. which is in itself a waterproofer. It is, so yeah. maybe I've just defeated my own argument. Well, you're making me feel like I want to rake all this off now. No, no, no. <laughs> My preferred one is uh, Bostic Free Flow. Which has got an adhesive in it anyway, so yeah. it's, it's doing the job, yeah. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's all going to be painted as well. But, so. but, but the, the thing is, the next coat that goes on, if that's got waterproof in it now, mm. the next coat that's going on is relying on the scratch coat. And in your case, you've got a really good scratch coat. Mm. And I think the problem is that sometimes when you see a scratch coat, it's a sort of very minimalist. What yeah. are you scratching with, by the way? Uh, just a normal scratch comb. Yeah. Just, just the, the thin, it's, I think it's like six five or six pins flat. in it. The Not the flat one, no, the, the, I like the round ones. Yeah, yeah, I like the round ones, but a lot of people say that's a flat one. I can never get on with the flat no, one. I, I don't think it, it rakes deep enough. No. And sometimes, it, well, I personally find it drags it off a little bit. Yeah. But what I like with this, um, it was an old old past three years ago told me about, um, about doing it. And the reason that we do it horizontally is so that when you put your next coat on, it hangs in sections yeah. all the yeah. way up and, yeah. and it can dry equally. Yeah. In, in bands without having a, like a big patch that could slump or if you do it vertically, it could all slide straight yeah, off. Yeah, absolutely. And the reason you do a wavy line is because when your next coat shrinks, 
as it always does, as mm. it dries, it's shrinking. So what's it, what's it, what it's doing is it's pulling on there, right? As it's shrinking, it's pulling on those, those lines, yeah? Mm. So if, if you had straight lines going through and it pulled on it, yeah. all the tension would be that way. So you get vertical cracking. Oh, yeah? I thought it just looked nice. So, That's why I did it. <laughs> so as that's shrinking, that's pulling that way and that way. So uh, you've got an equal thing. So they say, and this again comes from Cellcon, it's in there, it's way down in their, um, in their technical stuff. Yeah. And it says, always use a wavy line because that equals out the, the push. So all those people see the vertical lines going down, it may be because they've gone, and then again, I know there'll be people watching this plaster and going, what a load of old rubbish. But I know plasters have been working all their life and never read a book. They've never read anything about the trade, you know, yeah. so who knows? So oh, I don't trust people who read books. When I went on a course at Weber, do your top bit and you cut it and then having it straight, yeah. you get a crack. So, so what they're saying is like, do a piece that goes across there. Oh, okay. Not here, but up there. Uh, on the Because that's always the way. Yeah, it always cracks away up there. Exactly that, yeah. yeah. You're right in there, Ian? In the dry? Earlier on today, I gave all this Thermalite stuff a coat of SBR. Well, I made an SBR slurry, five litres of SBR, 10K of cement, chucked a little bit of sand in as well, just to give it a little bit more uh, grip. Dampened the walls down first, that's, that's a must. You can't just paint it directly onto the Thermalite, it's got to be damp. So we're now ready for, for rendering or for the scratch coat. I gave a little test patch about five, 10 minutes ago, quite soggy, which you wouldn't have if you went straight onto the Thermalite, even wetting it down with a hose and putting the the render on, you wouldn't be wet like that still. We're gonna get a bit on, starting at the top and working down, and we're gonna be putting some mesh in it as well to hold it all together and prevent any cracking. So James, why are you working in the rain then? Because there's so many comments about me not doing any work. <laughs> so I thought, for the sake of those people, I'm gonna stand in the rain and do something for a change. <laughs> <laughs> why not, instead of drinking tea and chatting? Well, I've got to tell you, James, my experience of YouTube viewers and comments is you'll never make them all happy. I Whatever doubt that really, yeah. There'll still be people bitching and moaning, saying, why is he rendering in the rain? <laughs> yeah. Actually, oh, we've got a nice got big such overhang, a good overhang here. here. You're not going to get that washing off, are you? Nah, so uh, it's a nice... It's only a scratch, so... Yeah. And to be honest, on this section as well, I'm, I'm going to scratch it, or I'm going to get this mesh in. Yeah. I'm only going to work about a square metre at a time. I can get the, the mesh in nicely, and then I'll probably do another, another float over the top of it before the top yeah. coat. Yeah because it's a little bit bumpy. Yeah. Because somebody took it off of a mechanical <laughs> drill, didn't they? That's <laughs> no, good, it's fine. But yeah, we're gonna wrap this around the alkali corner. resistant fiberglass mesh. She just push in, lovely. Do you know what, I made the mistake of using that, one of the first times I ever used it. Yeah. I used the whole run down the side of a building, <laughs> like about three meters long. And I thought that's great, I'd done it like that. And then it started to peel off the edge. <laughs> and of course, as it peels off, it's like the dominoes going. The more that That's it. it peels, the more weight there is, and, and you never stop it. It's like know? when you get a bit of scrim tape go on a That's finished it, exactly plaster. That. Yeah, so, so I thought, oh, so what I'm going to do now is I'll just put a few 
temporary mechanical fixings in the corners <laughs> just to hold it. But I think your idea of cutting it off into meter strips is better, really. Yeah, I'm, I've also got to be and wary of where the edges of my yeah. thing are because you, you need to lap it 50 mil yeah. um, as, a, as a minimum. But we get a nice bit over the top, put a bit of scratch in it. That's it. I was sort, you know, like you say your dad's a butcher. Yeah. Was a butcher. Yeah. So back in the day, you know, if somebody was a smith, then they would become John Smith. Yeah. And then the butcher would become, you know, John Butcher or whatever. So people, their surnames said something about it. Yeah, they said their surname, yeah. So when you look at your surname, King, what went wrong there? <laughs> well, funny enough, I looked into that because I thought, oh, maybe I do come from royalty. Yeah, yeah it's worth knowing, we'll be... isn't it? Because with Harry giving up the post, there might be an opening. Well, yeah, there could be. I'll tell you where it comes from, or it says the most likely reason is that, um, <laughs> you'll like this one, is that they often played the king as an actor in plays. Ah, right. So, so I'm an actor. You typecast. You're there yeah, so I'm not time. really doing this. Shakespearean. This is, this is not me. No. I'm just acting. No. <laughs> well, it's funny, that's, that, that's good though, isn't it? Because, you know, you can understand in Shakespeare's time, there were a lot of openings for people to play the king. Yeah. But there weren't any real openings for people to play plasterers. Nice bit of mix, mate, there, yeah, lovely. Once so again, knocking that? my own gear up. Yeah, what, so that's got the... This is got the Westrum sand. Westrum sand. So and four, four and one. And the Rendade stuff in. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Which is the plasticizer as well, yeah? Yeah, so yeah. bit of waterproofing and plasticizing, holding it back a little bit. You know, back in the day when you used to get it tipped rather than in the bolt bags, Oh, yeah. It was always the cat shit that was in it, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry there? Cat shit. Oh, <laughs> every time. <laughs> you go, you All spread the it out and it's oh. a big brown streak going across it. Oh. <laughs> Bloody cats. <laughs> So, are you using beads or not? You won't use them. I will be. Will um, be. Normally, if I was just if it was all being pebble dashed, I wouldn't bother. Yeah. Because it just interferes with the pebble dash. But yeah. because we've got the flat banding going on the corners oh, you have. Yeah, and around yeah, the windows, yeah. yeah, we've got to get all that set up. That. That's why I was asking about the beads. But yeah. yeah. So if you didn't, if you just pebble dash and you'd round the corners. Yeah, and just fill it just up go, with. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's the best finish really. Yeah. Because you can get pebbles all sticking on the, otherwise you've got a nice straight edge. Yeah, it does And then all rough pebble dashing, it doesn't, doesn't really look, right. look very good. So last time I was here, you were doing the multi-point locking That's on right, this. Yeah. How did that work out for you in the end? Um, yeah, it worked out really well actually. Um, obviously you, you saw it all fitting in, into yeah, the door. That's right, before, yeah. before I put the handles on. Yeah. Um, re, I re-hung the door back into position and I got all of the uh, keeps set up, five yeah. of them, top, yeah. bottom, and then three up the middle. Um, yeah, and it, it works really well actually. Um, with this door, it's got um, like a draft excluder to be fitted. Yeah, but yeah. Of course, you know it's not. We haven't finished painting it yet, um, so I didn't want to put the draft excluder in now. Otherwise, and then try and paint around it. Yeah. So what I've done, I always keep a bit of this stuff. Oh, um, okay. This Schlegel. Um, um, Legal Schlegel. Yeah. So I just cut bits off, and I just put them at the locking points uh, on the hinge side at the head, just so I know what the actual yeah. when the door when it is finished and and all fitted yeah that I know that's the gap yeah. that I need yeah so I can make all the adjustments for the the keeps and everything else now um, and then when we come to paint we can whip all these um, temporary pieces out get it all fully painted up and then um, fit the the final one in with no paint marks yeah on. so these these keeps have got adjustments screw adjustments yeah on them, they, they have so, actually yeah so they're, yeah. they're all really um, you can fine tune it really yeah and in fact they've even got a little mark on the center of each one which oh, shows you the nice. center Brilliant. Um, so I could measure straight off the edge of the frame. Yeah, to, that so is a nice idea, isn't it? Because yeah. very often they can be a little oh, bit really guesswork helpful. and you'll yeah, open, close, adjust and trial and error. So, no, 
No, that's good, mate. So that's a pretty strong door, really. I mean, nothing, oh, yeah. nothing is impregnable, but that's, no, that's no, but you, give it a good you've go done your best. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think one other little tip that I like to do actually, yeah. I don't know if you notice, I've not used the uh, the black screws in the hinges. I've only put a couple in. Yeah. But because it's going to come on and off, on and off a few times. Oh, okay. It starts to wear the coating. Exactly. So I leave the, the black screws or brass or whatever you're using because they're not, often not the greatest quality. No, no, no. I leave them right till the end until the final fit. Then I'll put all them screws in. They're not all sheared up. They're not yeah. all spun out the middles. Yeah. They're nice and black or brass or whatever colour they are. Um, and know, everything just, looks pristine. Yeah, yeah, it's just a nice little finish. Gotcha. It helps you along the way. Yeah, yeah. Nice, very good. Hinge bolts, top and bottom. Yep, hinge bolts. There you go. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we've got the whole locking system. I don't know if you can see Go on, you might as well do it. Outside, Show it to us. Outside is, passes out of the frame. So we put the wood in the hole, as they say. That's it. And then all works nice. So it crunches it nice and tight up to the uh, draft proof. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But it will do once you've got it on. That's it, it's ideal. And we've yeah. got the Euro lock cylinder that we're going to be putting in. So we've got this door, we've got a pair of French doors and the other door on the back. So we're going to get um, four cylinders keyed alike. Yeah, I've got, so, so you've got to sweep. just one key for yeah. the lock. Yeah, go through the lock. That's um, a great idea. Yeah, it just makes so they'll end up with 12 so, keys. All so the where's it, where'd you get those from? Uh, I'm Hungry Direct. Okay, good. Yeah. So yeah. They've, got, they've got a lot of stuff on there actually. Yeah. It's probably, it's one of them little catalogues you can sit down on a Sunday afternoon flicking yeah, through. Yeah, yeah, I remember. All the stuff no one's really interested in, but to us it is quite interesting sometimes. Yeah. yeah. The wood, wood, is it wood picks, that one? What's the, there's another one, isn't there? Oh. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, there's a few around. Yeah. Um, over the top here. What's... Oh, it's just... You a, just left the space or an what? An air gap, yeah. Yeah, tr it, ventilation. <laughs> oh, so I like a trickle vent. Yeah. That's good. That was when I was laying the blocks and I, I put the... I didn't allow the uh, the brick course at the bottom. You can ah, the brick course out of the top. Ah, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. We can make it. I'm going to make it up. I'm going to mesh around it, tile that in together, and then inside I'll make it up with some stud. Yeah, um, that's all you need, isn't once it? Once it's all boulded through and plastered. No, yeah, really, no, no, no. I do that sometimes, funnily enough, because it's sometimes critical. You think, I'll just go course with the, the lintel. And then if it's rendered, it doesn't matter, does yeah. it? You'll bring it down and yeah. it's sorted out. Different yeah. story if it's yeah. soldier course. Yeah. Sorry to um, point that out, mate. <laughs> that's all right. We all make mistakes. <laughs> no, I, no, I don't that's mind, not, I don't mind that's admitting That's not mate. a mistake, mate. That's, um, that's allowing for... Well, it was for these cables to pass through yeah. temporarily. That's Fu why. Future proofing. Brilliant. <laughs> We've got a dash. <laughs> so have I, funny enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll come back and see you when you're chucking us. Yeah, one. yeah. Have you got a Harling trail? No, it's just use my hands. Just use hand, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's good for cutting your nails down. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Well, hopefully, give us a bell. We'll come back yeah. and see you. Yeah, yeah no Lovely. problem. Thanks, mate. All right, mate. Cheers. See you later. All the best.